This is Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden, and today we're going to be painting this beautiful painting of a boat by Surratt. Actually, it's not by Surratt. It's by one of our artists here at Sipping and Painting. But yeah, I get the idea. It's in, this, it's in the same style uh, with lots of dots, so it's going to be fun to paint. Our arm might get a little tired from all the stippling, but it's going to be fun. So the first thing I'm going to do, oh, by the way, this is what I have on hand. I have my paints. I have white, yellow, black, red, and blue. Okay. I also have a water jar. And then I have a few different brushes. We're actually not gonna use the fan brush. We're just gonna use a large flat, a small detail brush, and a medium flat, or whatever you have on hand. As long as you have three different sizes, you should be fine. Okay. I also have napkins, and yeah, I think we're good to go. Oh, uh, let me throw on my apron one sec. All right, I usually start out my sipping and painting with a little sipping, <laughs> with a glass of wine. I just had a uh, glass of water. So, do you have a glass of wine? Cheers to you. Yeah, no, no, tonight. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Well, happy Independence Day weekend. Thank you, you too. Thank you. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that large brush, and I'm just going to cover it with water. Just cover my canvas with water. I'm using a 16 by 20 pre-primed canvas. You can always use whatever you want when you paint with us here at Sipping and Painting Hamden. You can, you don't even have to use paints. You can use markers or chalk or pencils or whatever you want. I'm using a 16 by 20 pre-primed canvas, the kind that you get that's pretty cheap from Michaels, just uh, nothing special. And that's that, all right. So I just covered it with water. And the reason I do that is here in Denver, it's very dry. Uh, ordinarily and the paint dries up pretty quick so I want to make sure that it stays moist. If you don't have a brush you can always spritz it with a sprayer of water too. My mom used to use one of those a long time ago when she was ironing. That's how old I am. Um, great, so it's got a little bit of water on the can handy in case I need them. And uh, real quick about acrylic paints, they dry in about 10 minutes. And so uh, if you, in between strokes, I recommend putting your brush in the water, cleaning it really well, and then checking to see if it's clean by dabbing it on a napkin. Uh, but it's important to keep your brushes clean when you're painting with acrylic paint. So basically we're gonna be doing a ton of stippling and that's the artist word for uh, pop, 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 pop. We're gonna be doing a ton of that. Uh, so the first place we're gonna do it, we're gonna make this outline of our ship sail, okay? Normally we would start with the background, but because, uh, let me think for a second. You know what, I'm seeing a little bit of orange underpainting behind the sail. We, we could do the layers first, uh, that would still work. I just had to think about it. Um, different artists do this painting differently in our studio, and it's been a little while since I did it, so. Let's just go with our bands and then we'll put the boat on last. By then the background will have dried and we should be able to put on white just fine, no problem. Okay. Uh, now one thing to think about is in general, we don't wanna put the horizon line right at the center of the canvas. You either wanna put it a little lower than the center or a little higher. And the reason for that is if you have your horizon line exactly in the middle, then your eyes don't know which half to look at. Um, although sometimes if you have a line like that and you have a subject area that's bright in the center, then you can break that rule because um, you have a focal point. I am gonna make this a little bit lower than okay. midline. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of water on my medium brush and I'm gonna go right into my blue paint and I'm gonna just make a horizon line 
by starting to these taps. We're gonna be doing a ton of these taps. Now my water, my paint's a little thin, so I went back in, pick up some more, and I'm making a horizon line with the taps. This is just a hair below center. It's almost center, but it's just a little below. Okay. So I'm doing a just a line of taps. And I'm always gonna be painting on the sides of my canvas and the top and the bottom as well, so that I don't have to buy a frame. And uh, one, one piece of information about perspective, when something is very far away, it looks more blue. Uh, the sky looks blue, the ocean looks blue, especially the part that's very far away, where up close it sometimes looks green. Uh, and mountains tend to look blue in the background, you know, when they're far away. And so I want this background area to be good and blue. I'm not going to add any white to these top few lines of pokes or pops or technically stipples. And so I'm just, you can go in a line like this if you want to, um, to indicate um, ripples in the water. But then later on, you don't have to stay in a line, but it just kind of gives the horizon line more of a flatness far away. And from, from a distance, water looks flat far away. Up close it doesn't, but far away it does. So I'm just going in three solid lines in the very back like that. And then I'm gonna continue down the entire canvas with blue and sometimes with white on it. And the way I would do that is I'm gonna pick up blue on one side of my medium brush and then pick up white on the other. And that way I get a mix of blue and white on the same brush. You can see when I'm spinning it, it's blue and white. And I don't have to go in lines anymore uh, when I'm going farther down the canvas. I can, you can if you want to. I won't stop you, but you don't have to. It's not so important. You can go in little sections like that if you really want to. This is your call. But the whole idea is, are these pops. These pops are dots. And where there's a little more white, maybe the water's splashing. Maybe a whale just jumped in. Maybe the boat's leaving a little um, current behind it. Is that called a, a wake? I'm not a boater too much, but. So I'm just going to make these pops in sections or in lines, your call. And it's okay if some are more blue and some are more white. That's, that's great. That's what we want. That's what this one has. And since we're on uh, online, and, and thank you so much for joining me and for your patience and getting um, and me getting it set up online. But since we're online, if you want to play music for yourself, feel free. I'm not going to put music on. Normally, I would here in the studio for a live class, but because we put these these classes on YouTube afterward, we have to avoid copyright mm -hmm. yeah, issues. Yeah, makes sense. So we don't we don't put music on. We did the first two, and then we got a copy let, copyright <laughs> message, and we're like, oh, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. And it's just just stippling all over. Some blue, some white, some mixed. And I'm going to take this all the way down to the bottom. If your paint gets a little bit thick, you can add a little bit of water to it and stir that in as well. I really needed a nice calm painting since it's July 5th. 
And last night was so loud. Yeah. This is very peaceful. Last night was very loud. Are you in Denver? I'm in Castle Pines and I think the county just gave up on going to people's houses and telling them to stop shooting off fireworks because it was it was just impossible to stay ahead of. So it was yeah, hard for it, my dogs. <laughs> it was hard for what? My dogs. Yeah. I have dogs too. I have dogs and a cat and chickens and they were all terrified. Yeah. It just felt like it went on for hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it did. So today I'm just really grateful for the peace and quiet. Yeah. yeah. So I, did just, I did just hear one fire firework already. Firecracker. I wonder when they'll run out. <laughs> yeah. So the video is on me as I'm painting, but I should just remind you that uh, your voice will be in the um, video. So your identifying information will not, but just so you know. Okay. When the dogs start or my son is yelling, you, I will switch to mute. <laughs> okay. It's more I'm concerned about your privacy, so. Yeah, I won't give <laughs> I just you need you to know that. Right. <laughs> this is the only painting we have in this style, um, but I'm enjoying the Zen like trance of just making dots. So I might do more of these. Yeah, it's nice for a change. It's something different. And I'll just say for our viewing audience that this was a style of impressionism. There were so many different artists trying brand new things when Impressionism was really taking off. And this is one of the many things, this pointillism, like point to then, uh, some people were using painting in cubes or lines, I'm trying all different kinds of ways to be different. And this was one of many, kind of fun. So I am finished with the bottom of my painting. Can you tell me how much time um, you need? I'm probably three minutes behind you. I literally saw you turn it, so I just switched mine to the bottom. Great, okay, terrific. And for those who will be watching this on YouTube tomorrow or after tomorrow, you can always stop your video and restart it anytime you want. I am just gonna tell you one thing. Without cleaning my brush at all, uh, I'm gonna pick up just the tiniest amount of red and I'm gonna mix it in uh, because I'm going to make a bluish purple and I'm just going to make a few pops of bluish purple and I'll show you why. Also, there's a little bit of water? Yeah, there's just a little bit of it splashed here and there in the water. So it's going to be just a little bit of blue, a tiny bit of red, and maybe a tiny bit of white. I'm just going to go with a blue purple and just put a few dabs that in. 
It just adds a tiny bit of purple to that water. Blue is, depending on the kind of blue that you're using, with a really powerful pigment, uh, if, it, if it's a phthalo blue, it's very powerful, so you'll need more blue than red. It just depends on the chemical makeup of your paint, um, it, how much blue to how much red you need. And then I would throw in a little bit of white to lighten it up if it's too dark. And then where are you putting those in the water? Great question. They are kind of sporadic. There's a little bit down here at the bottom a little bit down here, and there's a little bit parallel to the boat, to, uh, in front of the boat. Okay. I'm not sure what they're symbolizing. I think it's adding warmth to the bottom, and in general, when things are uh, far away, they look bluer, but when they're closer, they look uh, warmer color. They look warmer, so you see those red oranges. I'm also a Bob Ross instructor here. I want, <clears throat> this is not Bob Ross, obviously. Being Bob Ross, I tend to put the little warm colors in the front or the bottom, which is signifying closer, um, and the cooler colors in the back, and that gives a little bit of uh, dimension. Perspective, rather. Perspective. My purple, depend, because of the kind of paint that I'm using, my purple is not really all that purple. Maybe yours is, I don't know. Mine's kind of turning, mine's a little red, but it's, I'm adding a little to get it more purple. Okay. It's just adding little, little uh, warmer shades in the water, closer, and then for some reason in parallel to that boat. Not quite sure why, but that's what the original has, so I'm going to go with it. The original inspired painting. You know, I'm wondering if maybe they did their boat and then they just had blue, purple paint on their brush and then just stuck it on there. <laughs> yeah. I've done that with other things. No one's going to see the original if it doesn't look exactly like it. No one will even know. When I assigned this painting idea to one of my staff, I just said, I want something that looks like the rock, and I want a really simple composition, and uh, this is what she came up with. Have you been with us at the studio before, Julie? Yep. Okay. I thought your name looked familiar. It's hard to know. Sure. Yeah. We just I, opened. I recently, Sorry, did, I recently did some mountains. Nice. Um, I don't know, maybe last week with my son. And then I, earlier I did like a green thing, which is kind of Narnia-ish idea, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So... I like, I like that Narnia one. It's a little tricky. It is, but it turns out really nice. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I like that one. That was my original. I had really a lot of fun coming up with that one. We actually do that painting in a lot of different colors now. Um, and each one's called something different. When it's in orange and brown, it's called tree lights. Um, <laughs> we've done it in blue, and then it's called enchanted forest. And then yeah. tried it in red. One time I tried it in red and I showed it to someone. I said, what should I call this? And they said, colonoscopy. Oh, geez. And I went, all right, maybe we'll skip the yeah, red one. Maybe. <laughs> Definitely didn't name it that. <laughs> all right. Just let me know when you're ready to move on and take your time as long as you need. And I'm going to grab another water bottle while you're while you're doing that. There 
I think I'm just gonna plug in another light. I mean, I'm probably good whenever you're ready, so. Okay, I'll, I'll give you just another minute, okay? Sure, yep. We're doing terrific on time, so. While you're finishing up that up, I'm going to give my spiel to those people in YouTube land and also to you. Um, we just reopened at the studio here. It's July 5th, 2020. And we just reopened. We're doing Zoom classes as well as in-person classes. Our in-person classes are still really small and we completely understand that, but we are being extremely careful with, uh, hand sanitizer and masks and temperature checks at the door. So we're just being really careful. So if anyone's concerned about that, we're, uh, we're super careful. And we also have some retail items that are new for us. We have these paint your own face mask kits. And in the kit, you get paints, brushes, a palette, napkins, an apron, and then five white cotton cloth three-ply face masks. And, uh, and instructions on how to decorate those masks to make them your own. And um, I've seen really, really cute things that people have done with those. And then we also have a variety of face masks that we've hand painted. Uh, we also have our sipping and painting ones and they're ridiculously cheap. Um, these are like $2 and these are $5, super cheap. Uh, so if you know anyone who needs face masks or you wanna paint some and decorate them to give as a gift, um, we're here during retail hours that are on our calendar and we would love to love to tell you a little bit of that stuff. All right, so if you're good, I think I'll move on. Okay. Sound good? All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our yellow and in the sample painting, there's yellow in the orange and there's yellow in the green. It's both. But then in these areas, there are some areas that have no yellow up in the top, and that makes it look like, like clouds, like maybe mountains or hills, where it's green and yellow and black, and then where it's just green and white, it looks like clouds. So we're just going to go ahead and treat this whole area like it's one area, and then we're going to come back in and put the the band in. And what I mean by that is I'm going to just sketch on those um, mountainy areas with just some yellow pops. And then that's going to tell me where, oops, that's going to tell me where those, I, they're either mountains or hills, but I'm just going to pop on the shape of mountains or hills. Can you see that okay? Yeah, yeah, a little, yeah I can oh, see it. Oh. Okay, um, I'm just gonna pop on some in the shapes of mountains or hills because that's where we're gonna be putting green and yellow and black pops. And I'm starting with the yellow because that's easier on my brush. If I started with black, my water would get black pretty quick. So if I start with yellow, then I can add green to this upper part, and then down here, I can add orange. Since this orange band is also going to have these yellow pops in it, I can just go right ahead in and put those yellow pops in this band that will be orange when I'm done. 
So I'm hoping you can see that that's yellow. Mine is kind of a bright yellow. We're gonna be adding orange to it and then a little bit of red. So it won't be so faint when we put on the next layer. So I'm just using straight on yellow and I'm first I put it in the shapes of these hills or mountains, whatever those are back there, leaving gaps here for what will be more like clouds. And then just filling in everything below it all the way down to the blue area, but not overlapping. There's no overlapping in this painting. They left their colors pretty um, distinct. So they don't have any overlapping in the sky and the water. And I'm just gonna mix up a little bit. Of, I'm using my dirty brush. My brush has still has yellow on it. I'm gonna mix up a little bit of orange anyway. And then even if you're not there yet, that's fine. I'm just gonna start mixing mine up. I'm just adding a little yellow, a little red, and a little white until I get an orange that I'm happy with. And again, depending on the red that you use, yours might be more peachy or it more be, might be more um, red, more yellow. It's just really how much of each color you, you blend together to get the vibrancy of your orange and your personal preference. We use student grade acrylic paint around here, so the pigments are sometimes a little subtle. If you're using good quality, really super good quality acrylic paints, you might get some brighter colors because those usually have more pigment. So I have an orange, and if I put some of these pops on in the shapes of those hills or mountains, then you can start to see better that shape if the yellow was hard to see. You can see this shape that I was putting all this in. Oh, darn. You know what I messed up, you guys? Hold on. Oh, man. I just messed up. I got carried away with my orange. Hopefully you didn't do what I did, but if you did, no problem, it's fixable. I forgot that I'm gonna put green up there. Did you put green, did you put orange up there? I only did a couple and mine's not super bright, so it'll be fine. I did most, okay. I was doing the bottom, so I'm good. I was thinking about the color and not about the composition. Sure. So yeah. I, while you're working on yours, the orange is actually gonna go in that medium band. I'm gonna scrape off what I can, and then I'm just gonna recover it, no big deal. One great thing about acrylic paint is if you screw up, you can always let it dry and paint over it, always. Um, and that's what I love about acrylic paint. Acrylic paint dries so quickly that it's, it's really um, very friendly. Now, when I teach Bob Ross classes, I'll have people in my class that only paint with oils and they'll say, oh no, I don't like oils for that reason, acrylics for that reason, oils are better. It's really just personal preference, whatever you prefer, but I find it's easy to just let it dry and paint over it. Uh, you can also try to wipe it off with, oh, if it's still wet enough, you can try to wipe it off. But I'm gonna be going that, over that with some black and some green, so I'm not real concerned about it. This is what Bob Ross would call, call a happy accident. And he used to make them. When I was in Florida um, at the Bob Ross um, workshop, I used to hear stories from people who knew him and were friends with him. And sure, he made, he made happy accidents all the time. And sometimes he would just stick a tree over it or a bird. And it's good to make accidents and learn how to recover from them. So once I, I wipe that off, I can always just put more white on it and let that dry a few minutes. And then I can paint over it. It's just like when I was 
I'm 57. When I was a kid, um, we used a typewriter instead of a computer. I'm that old. And we used to use a product called Whiteout. And it was just, you know, correction fluid. And if we made a mistake, you paint over it and with the correction fluid, you let it dry, and then you can keep typing or writing. And that's exactly what white paint will do for you. You just have to give it a five or 10 minutes to dry, and it's, you're good to go. All right. So happy accident. And I'm gonna get back on track and start putting in my orange. So the orange is going to go in this band in the center. And I'm going to just make a line across this, the top of where that orange band is going to be so that I know. And mine is still looking kind of faint. So when I go back in with my red, it's all going to blend together a bit. And then I'll have red and paler orange and maybe some brighter orange and some yellow because it will all mix in a tiny bit on my brush. And again, I'm sure to, I'm being careful to put some paint on the tops and the sides of the bottom as I paint. So that's called gallery wrap so that you don't have to by a frame, you can just hang it on the wall when you're finished. Or as my husband would say, put it in my giant pile of paintings. So at any point, you can just mix in a little bit more red so that you have variations of color in your orange. You have some yellow, some red, some orange, some in between. The more shades of between yellow and orange you have, the more visual interest you'll have in that area. We're going right up to the waterline, but we're not going into the waterline. In the original inspiration that I have here, it's obvious that the, that the artist who came up with it covered all of the middle section with yellow and orange and red, and then went on top of it with a little white. So you're welcome to, as your last color, add white dots where you want, um, or you could just leave the white dots that are already on your canvas and not cover it quite so much. That's really your call. Or a little of both. Everyone has a different style and your style will come through in your painting. And that's what we want. We want to see your style, not their style. Although really this is in the style of Surat. 
and it'll be our own unique interpretation of Surat style. I'm putting, I just put a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow, white on one side of my brush, yellow on the other, and I'm gonna pop in some of those white spots because the original inspiration painting has them, so I'm gonna to try to do what they did. And they're just overlapping with all those other colors that are in there. I do recommend always when you paint to get up and stand about 10 feet away and look at your painting uh, periodically because other people will see it differently than you're seeing it standing right up on top of it. And you wanna get an idea of what it's gonna look like hanging on your wall rather than if you have your nose in it three inches in front of your canvas. So I do recommend that you get up and do that. And after we get our background on, we're going to take a break and let it all dry before we put our boat on. So that's another time you can take a look at it from farther away and really see what you've done and make any tweaks that you want. And it's my obvious classes, I always say, you know, a painting, a painting is like raising teenagers not really sure how you've done when you've got your nose in their face all the time. You have to step away and give them a little space and they take a little space and then you can kind of get a better idea and you come back and you appreciate each other that much more when you can see it with see them and your painting with fresh eyes. Because our colors are very distinct and they're not blended in in this painting, I am really being cautious about really cleaning my brush as well, better than I might in another painting that where they're not so distinct. All right, well, my, my white dried for the most part, so I'm gonna go back in and put more yellow in those hills that I had. And hopefully you didn't make the same mistake I did and uh, you don't have to do it to the extent that I did, but that's what I'm gonna do now is fix that. And you'll never know I made a mistake. except that it's on YouTube for the whole world to see. Is my sound okay? Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I don't wear a mic and I have one, but I forget sometimes. So just want to make sure you can hear me. I wonder if tonight will be as noisy as it was last night.
Let me know when you are ready for me to show you how to mix the green, okay? Okay, I'm almost there. No problem. All right, I'm ready whenever you are for the green. Okay. All right, so basically green is just yellow and blue mixed together. This is a cool green. It's actually a phthalo green. Since we're using a very limited color palette to serve primary colors, we want to put in more blue than yellow to make something similar. So I'm going to, and um, remember I said that blue is, it's a, it's a heavy pigment and yellow generally isn't. So even if you use the same amount of blue and green, uh, pardon me, blue and yellow, you might end up with a blue, more blue-green anyway. So again, it just depends on the exact paint that you're using. I just added equal amounts of blue and yellow and I'm getting a very bluish green, which is exactly what I want. I'm just going to stir that together real well. When I'm mixing paint, it's easier for me to mix it by lifting it and plopping it down than just stirring round and round. It seems to be a little more effective. But stirring works as well. Just takes a little longer when you stir. And then I'm gonna try it out. This darker green is gonna go mixed in with my yellow in those mountains and hills. And I say darker because when we get to the sky in between, we're gonna add white to it, but we're not gonna do that for this section. We're just gonna use this darker green. It will mix a little with the yellow that's not dry and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Later, after we put in our boat, we're going to come back in and put some black dots in this, but we're not going to do that until the last step because we don't want to use black too early and dirty our brushes and water with black. We'll just put in the, the green and come back later and do the black. I was really fortunate last year, um, I got to knock something off my bucket list. Um, my husband and I have been married 35 years this, um, this fall, and since our youngest child was graduating me uh, from college, we were super excited. We went to, we rewarded ourselves with a trip to Paris, and I got to see all of the, these amazing artists that I've just been dreaming about seeing their paintings in person. And um, man, it was just, I'll never forget it long I live. And it was just so wonderful to see them all, all these paintings up close and personal. Memories for a lifetime. We're not going to put in any white with that layer that has green and yellow. It's going to have black later.
When you're ready, and there is absolutely no hurry, but when you're ready, you can mix up a little bit more of that green if you're running out. And then we're gonna put, add a little bit of white, and we're gonna just use that lighter shade of the same green in between these hill areas or mountain areas, whatever those are. We're gonna add just a little white, and that's gonna add just a lighter shade of that. And I think I'm gonna add in a tiny bit more blue as well, because if that's more sky, then I wanna just make, a, make it a slightly more blue. It's definitely, definitely gonna be a lighter color though. And we're gonna do the same thing with dots there. And then we're gonna come back in after we've got this blue pop down there all over, we're gonna come back in on top of it with just plain white, just in those cloudy areas. And be sure to paint the top and the sides as well. Ever since we closed on March 16th, I've been cursing this pandemic, but you know what? It really has been great in a few different ways. One, it forced me to, use, to learn Zoom, and now we have quite an active YouTube channel um, with lots of different Zoom paintings recorded on there. And then we're gonna make some, we're making, working on some kids' kits we made a lot of face masks, so it really forced us to be creative in new and different ways, and um, that's pretty cool. After you get your, that sage color in, in the cloud area, you can go back over it with pure white. And they might just blend together, and that's great too. If one's partially dry and one's completely wet, they'll blend together, and, and that's, that's great.
And you can also vary your strokes a little bit. I'm pulling my cloud line tops a little bit longer in some areas because it occurred to me that clouds are kind of wispy. But that's really up to you. You can vary your strokes or leave them exactly the same. That's really a personal style preference. It's the popping or the stippling that is the Surratt style, not necessarily the exact measurement of the brush strokes. I guess Seurat, Seurat is French, so it'd be Seurat, right? All right, when you are happy with your background, we're gonna take about 10 minutes and just let this dry. Um, because we, we wanna come back in and we're gonna put in a purple boat. We're gonna put in white um, uh, masks. Right? And then we're also gonna put in our black in the hills. And so we wanna, and the outline of the boat as well. And we just wanna make sure that our colors don't blend. So right now I'm just going to, Clean my brushes really well so I don't forget when I come back. This would be a good time if you need to change your water jar to a fresh water jar or to refresh your beverage. We're just gonna let that dry about 10 minutes. So the whole thing is, is pretty dry when we put on our subject and our uh, black details. Any questions before I step away and take a 10 minute break? No, just come back. It looks like 637, so come back at 647. Sounds perfect. Okay, thanks. Thanks. And it's also a good time to step away. I would not, if I were you, I would not just keep messing with it the whole time. That's really tempting. And there have been lots of times I've done that, uh, but it's good to step away and then you can come back and see what you want to tweak as well. Like I, I just realized my, from stepping 10 feet away, I can tell that my middle band is not as yellow as the original. So I might just come back in and stick on a few more yellow and white pops in that area. Um, but don't overdo it. It's really important to take a break. I'm just gonna stick on a few yellow and white pops and I'm gonna force myself to step away. So if you need more white paint, this would be a good time to get that as well. Just gonna break up my orange a little bit.
So I am back and I'm looking at my painting and I'm just looking at if it's dry or not. Um, there's a couple ways to tell. One is to pick it up and rub it on someone next to you and that wouldn't be very nice. Another way is to just move the painting around and see if it's shiny in any areas. Mine looks a tiny bit shiny, but then I'm this, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I, I just want to try it. Since I put my paint on thick, some of it's a little bit shiny, but it's dry to the touch. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. And I'm just looking to see if that's the same up here. I had a little bit of moisture in there, but that's okay. I know my blue is dry. This I don't expect to be dry yet because I was still fussing with it. Um, so I understand if my orange isn't 100% dry, we can go in and start with the boat. And by that time, the um, orange will be 100% dry. In fact, I can even take my small brush and just pop out any clumps. Um, if I have any wet clumps, I can just pop them out with my small dry brush and that, that will speed that process up as well since um, since it's not hurting my painting to do that, I'm just looking for any clumps and smash them. All right, let me know when you're back and we'll get started with the shape of the boat. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're going to do our boat first. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to mix up some um, purple and we want to get it as bright as we can. Now again, my, I'm using a magenta paint, um, not a ton of pigment in this particular brand of paint, but that's okay. Uh, so I want to keep it as bright as I can, so I'm going to add a lot of red. This particular painting has a pretty, pretty bright violet and there's no way I'm going to get that exact color and I'm just going to be okay with that. We do have about 30 different colors of paint in our studio, um, but we're committed to using the primary colors here and mixing them because it's just a lot easier to teach YouTube that way. And also it gives us all an experience, more experience in blending and mixing paints. So a bunch of blue, adding a little white, I don't want to add so much weight that it dulls it down, but I want it to show up and not just look dark and a nondescript color. So my purple is not going to be as vibrant as the one in the painting. And the one in the painting, to be honest with you, in the original that we have here, the artist may have used a fluorescent paint. We do that here at the studio sometimes. Because, you know, Saturday night parties here. Everything's bright and shiny, and people like the glitter and the fluorescent paint. But we also have the regular paints too, and that's what we're doing. We're just mixing in our color until we get a purple that we're happy with, and that will work. And again, picking it up like you're whipping it actually stirs, it, uh, mixes it more quickly than just stirring round and round, I've found. It's like I'm whipping it, like I'm baking. It's good to know how to mix paint colors. It's a good skill. So my purple is still a little more gray than the original, but that's okay. Like I said, she might have used fluorescent when she mixed hers. We're trying to approximate the colors and no one's ever gonna see the original and say, oh, that shade's slightly off. I was just reading on, on the little break we had, I was just reading about 
uh, Surat. I guess it's pronounced Surat, not Surat. Uh, I didn't go to art school. My artist here did, though. Um, um, it's interesting. He uh, was obsessed with light and how to paint light. And he, he was quoted saying he couldn't care less what the composition was. He just cared about catching light when he painted. All right, so I mixed up a purple. Are you pretty good, ready for the shape of the boat? Yeah. Okay, great. So this boat is, let me just turn this a little bit. This boat is basically in the middle of this water from side to side. And it's in the shape of a triangle with a curved, with a slanted front and it's very thin. And then because part of the boat obviously is underwater that you can't see. And then, um, so from this side, I would say it's about four and a half inches maybe. Uh, the width of my hand uh, slightly closed. And then on this side, it's a little farther, my hand expanded. So I'm gonna go in from this side and open up my hand a little bit and put a dot about two inches down from the water line. Then I'm gonna angle it and I'm gonna put another dot about two to three inches. So I have the front of my boat at an angle. And then the end of the boat is a slightly open hand on this side, on the right side. And I'm gonna put a dot there to represent the tail of it. And then I'm gonna go in with my purple and I'm gonna just start to fill in the dots, connect the dots, those three dots. My purple, the way it mixed, looks a little more burgundy, but I'm okay with that. Yours is gonna be a different shade too, again, depending on the exact paint that you're using, and there's nothing wrong with that. But what's really important to know about this style of painting and this particular painting that we're doing is that the artist that inspired this was basically concerned with light. And by painting a lot of oceans and beaches, they're getting, um, the idea is getting the light bouncing all over the water and the sunset and uh, the clouds and all of these white specks mixed in um, and the spaces between our colors are basically just examples of light being reflected all over the place. And as long as we're doing that, we're honoring the artist. And even the original artist uh, was not concerned about composition or about the exact colors, but just really about the light and how the light is reflected. And if you want to add a little bit more white or a little bit more blue and red, your call, you can put in a slightly different shade and then alternate some of those in your boat color. So you're getting different shadows. And then we're gonna do a little bit of white as well. So I just put it in a slightly darker shade. I mixed in a little bit more blue, put in a little darker shade into that boat, alternating those purple with a slightly more blue purple. And then I'm gonna pick up white and I'm gonna add one more layer with just some white in it, letting those three, the purple, the slightly more blue purple and the white just mixing on my brush as I go. And that's the light shimmering and off the splashing water. Maybe the humidity around it. We don't know. It's giving my boat a little more contrast, which is what I want. We're gonna outline that boat in black and that will give it even more contrast and shadow.
All right, let me know when you've got your boat on. It's, I got my boat. At this point, because it doesn't have black in it, it's really hard to distinguish the boat from the water for me because my purple is more of a burgundy purple because of the makeup of my paint. Um, but when I get the black, once I get the black on, it will pop. I have no doubt. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up. I'm going to take, it doesn't really matter, your medium or your baby brush, whatever you like. I'm going to pick up a little white and put it in a place on my palette that I don't have paint yet, and a little black, more white than black, and I just want to mix up some light gray. Not as dark as charcoal, just a, a true gray. And we're going to use that gray to outline our sails with pops. So the first sail is higher than the than the sunset layer, about an inch above it. Um, about in the to the right, half of it is just slightly to the right of the left side of our boat, but then it curves. It's going to curve and it's going to come down and go in front of the boat, and then it's going to go over about three inches. So I'm going to put a dot. I'm going to look at what's a little bit right of the boat. I'm going to use my um, brush and then hold it straight up. I'm going to put a dot right up here. That'll be the top of my sail. And then I want to go to the left of the boat, the front of the boat, because that, that sail is going to curve. And so it's going to come out here. I'm going to put a, put a dot just above the top of the boat in gray there. And then I'm going to come across straight about three inches and I'm going to put another dot right there. And those, those are the, that's the triangle of the sail. But it's really important to notice on the sail that it curves like a shark fin. So you want to make sure you get this curve in there. And then this side curves a little bit on the right and this side curves even more on the left. And then it's straight across the bottom. So it's probably easiest to just do straight across the bottom first. It's going to be a little bit hard to see it in this water, but then we're going to fill it in with white, so then we'll really be able to see it. I'm going to use these horizontal taps like we did in everything else we've been doing, and I'm going to just tap down to the base of that, um, that sail. My gray wasn't mixed perfectly, so I got some little black dots, but that's okay. Make sure you get the curve in. That's the most important thing. Just make sure you your triangle curves. And if it doesn't curve, make it a little wider, a little bigger, and then make it curve. You can always make the sail wider. It's hard to make it uh, less wide. You can always add, make something bigger, but taking away paint is much harder. So I still have that sharp fin shape. That's what I want. I want that sharp fin shape. All right, I'm going to show you the next sail. The next sail is pretty parallel to the first, about two inches apart at the bottom and about three inches apart near the top, but it goes much higher. It overlaps with this big hill. So I'm gonna, it's a, you know about three fingers from the top of the painting. So I'm gonna put my dot right up there at the top of my sail. Then at the bottom, the boat is lower here. So I'm gonna go just above the boat and I'm only gonna come about two fingers wide from the top of the, 
from the bottom of this sail. So it's a little bit closer together. This triangle is going to be a little straighter, not so much a shark fin. This is pretty straight. You can just come down from that top and just connect the dots all the way down to that bottom dot. And that's the first side of that sail. And notice I didn't just touch it and then pull in a straight line because there are no straight lines anywhere in this painting. It's 100% stippling, popping. There's not a single straight line in it. The back of this triangle sail is at the horizon line, right on the horizon line. And it's about a hand's width a loose hands width uh, um, wide. So over here, and that's going to be the bottom corner of that sail. And now I have to go at an angle to connect it to that first dot. And I'm going to go at an angle to, to connect it to the top. all with the gray, all in dots. And then I still have gray on my brush. And these sails are not completely white. So I'm just going to use what's on my brush and I'm twisting it and turning it. And I'm just going to get rid of some of that excess paint in a few different spots on those sails. And then I'm going to fill it all in with white pops. But it's not pure white. There are some gray pops in there as well. So I'm just taking advantage of the gray that I already have on my brush and just using it to my advantage. Not too many, though. And then I can go into my paint with just pure white and just start filling in with pops all over. And it can blend in with that gray anywhere they meet. They're friends, they get along, they'll be fine together. Just pops on the inside, just filling in the whole inside of the sail with those pops of white. I'm a big fan of a Russian painter, unfortunately he recently passed away, um, but he painted in this technique with a knife, um, Leonid what is, Af Afromov. He recently passed away and his family is selling off all his paintings and so you can still get an original for a pretty decent price or um, what they call a studio original, which is basically um, in his workshop, um, does it in his style. I, I don't, it's not really an original, they call it a studio original, but basically uh, you can still get those pretty inexpensively and I just love his look. And he does it in different layers like this. Um, you, if you Google him, you can see his uh, other art and you probably recognize some. He does a lot of water, um, like people out on dates, walking in parks, with wet ground around them and reflections. And he's all about reflections, water reflections. Um, but he paints in this style, but instead of using a brush, he uses a knife. And man, it's so pretty. I love his work. And he just passed away probably six months ago, but his family is still training new artists in his style and they're still churning out lots of work. Um, and some of them he started or 
and there's some originals too that you can still buy. Leonid Avramov. He's a Russian Jewish painter and he moved to uh, Port of Ireland, I think. He's in His family's in Mexico. I say he's Russian and Jewish because he um, he has a few paintings that are about wedding scenes and they're obviously Jewish weddings. And uh, anyway, and he's painted some where he grew up scenes too when they're in Russia. And so I got a few of his um, studio originals and just really love them. They're at my home. If there are, if you still have white on your brush and if there's any areas that you want to fill in, you know, in the water, you can still do that while your painting is, you still have white paint on your brush. I noticed that there are, there's lots of contrast in this water in the original, more contrast than I had. So in the foreground here, I'm going to pop on a little bit of white, uh, put in some more reflections. Remember this artist, really loved light and was always trying to capture light. So by having some contrast in the water, we're honoring this artist's style. A little more contrast in the water. If you have lots of contrast in your water already, then you don't have to do that. And I'm just doing it to well, use up that leftover paint on my brush. Nice, nice. We're doing great. All, I have to, all we have to do now is we're going to put in some black. Uh, and I'll show you where we're going to put in our black. So let me know when you're ready. And then I'll show you where we're going to put our black. I did notice that my uh, sails look really choppy. They're, it looks very gray on the outside, very white on the center. So I could always pick up a little more gray and I could break that up if yours looks a little too blockish and not random enough. I'm ready whenever you want to get to the black. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just, I'm going to use my baby brush because I have more control and I'm going to just add a couple drops of water to my black just to make sure my black is good and thin. Not because it's already uh, getting a little hard it's drying. And then I'm going to outline my boat in these black pops. And I'm not going to do it too delicately. I'm going to do it very choppy. And some of those black ones are going to overlap with other black ones. Again, very choppy. Quick and choppy, nothing perfect. And then there are a few random black ones in the inside part of the boat. Awesome. And then the last step is we're going to put black in these hills. Just like we've been doing the whole time, we're going to Put in some black. I'm going to outline where I have a lot of white and then I'm going to go back in and fill in. To me what that represents is in those hills there's foliage and flowers and shadow 
and the black just represents all those shadows in between all that foliage and trees and who knows what else is up there. And really says this is a natural landscape up there. I was just doing, we, thinking we should do some knife paintings. Would you be interested in a knife painting? So how do you, what do you do for that? How does that work? Um, you just paint with knives. Um, now they're specific art knives. They're not just any knife, right, but you okay. can pick them up. At, <laughs> although you could probably paint with knives, so that's probably how it all started. Um, you can just pick them up at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or Gary's or whatever, you know, you happen to yeah. find convenient. And then we just use paint the same way and we just paint with knives. Wow. Yeah. It's a whole different experience. Something different. Yeah. We, we do paint with knives quite a bit in our, my Bob Ross oils class, uh, but not for Bob Ross, you don't paint with all knives. But there are classes that we could do that you paint the entire thing. And this is really similar to this style, in fact. It would just be slapping it on there. And to me, I love that look. I, there's something about it I just love. And like I said, that artist that I really like, uh, Leonid Afrimov, he, he paints in that style with knives and or did. And um, gosh, I love his stuff. So great for reflections and light. All right, so that is it. That is, that is our painting. We're done. Um, yeah, one thing that I do see here in the original, it's lighter right here. And I'm thinking that's a reflection of this upper um, sail. And so if you want, you can just, before we sign our name, if you want to just put a little more white down in this general area below that, that sail, it's just kind of showing that there's a reflection of light in the water reflecting that sail and then of course there would be another one a little bit on this side too for that one and that just shows the reflection that kind of makes sense right everything's reflected in water yeah that looks a little better and then when you're finished, just sign your name. I like to sign mine in the bottom right-hand corner. And you can use any color you like. I'm just going to use my white since it's on my brush. I'm going to put my little initials in there. And I'm done. And um, one thing that's kind of fun to do is to put, your, um, put the date on the back of your paintings. And you can see, you know, if you, as you keep painting, you'll see how your paintings progress, um, both personality-wise and whatever's going on in your life and, and your skill level. And so uh, that's kind of fun to put your date on the back and uh, go back and look at it 10 years from now and go, oh, wow, when I was at that period of my life, I painted like that. And, you know, and then I learned this technique and started painting like that or had this going on in my life. Kind of, kind of a fun way to um, chronicle your career as an artist that way. And we're done. We are done. Yay. Thank you for painting with me today. Um, just want to say thank you to, uh, to both Julie and to all of our viewing audience. Thank you so much for painting this beautiful painting with me. It's called S.S. Surratt. Um, and 
Uh, you've been painting at Sipping and Painting Hamden virtually. Thank you so much, and I hope you'll join us for another class very soon. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Take care.